The successful launch of NASA's James Webb's telescope, which has now reached its orbit, is going here and helps us find terrifying mysteries about the universe, black hole, its existence, the birth of the first galaxies, and answer some of the most nerve-wracking questions, which I am sure we are all much awaited for. The topic for today's video will be to teach this space giant's terrifying discovery at the end of the universe. So make sure to stay till the end to answer your questions and subscribe to our channel to find out more intriguing facts about the universe and space agencies. With NASA's new JWST, I'm sure you're wondering why launch a new telescope when we already have so many in the universe. Telescopes serve the purpose of sending information about the cosmos to Earth to understand and research better your mysterious cosmos. Where did it begin? Where is the end? What are the other components we are not aware of? It's more like we know how the universe came into existence without knowing any further detail about what happened after the Big Bang Theory approximately 14 billion years back in time. And to find answers to these questions, these telescopes send information in the form of pictures from outer space to Earth. Moreover, it would act like a time machine that reflects light from over 13 billion years back in time. But then, what was the need for having JWST when we already have Hubble? a satellite that has sent pictures of the universe to Earth for over three decades. The JWST has exceptional features which can travel further in the universe and take better pictures making it far better than the Hubble. The Hubble is only 340 miles away from the Earth, while the JWST is much farther, around a million miles away, making it impossible for repairs during its launch and operation, unlike the Hubble. It is a powerful telescope. The telescope owes a significant chunk of its power utility to its magnificent structure. The giant primary mirror made of beryllium is about 6.4 meters in diameter, consisting of 18 smaller mirrors arranged in perfect alignment, which are covered in a gold coating that is 1,000 times thinner than a single strand of hair. Doesn't this blow your mind? Because it indeed did mine. A five-layer sunshield is used, which is approximately the size of a tennis court, used to maintain the temperature and cool down the telescope for its proper functioning. The mirror is said to reflect infrared light better than any other metal. The sunshield plays a vital role in the structure of the telescope since it provides SPF of 1 million because one side of it will be facing the sun with temperatures of 260 degrees Fahrenheit, while the other side will be facing freezing temperatures of negative 370 degrees which nearly gives a difference of 600 degrees, which can baffle the functioning of the machine. The JWST will send its first photos this summer and begin proving its worth through its work. Humans are always intrigued and curious about the concept of space travel, but little do they realize it is more than that. It is time travel. To find out the edge of the universe, we need to first figure out its dimensions. Our universe is quiet and it is said to be 13.772 billion years old. How big is our universe? Scientists today believe that it is around 28.5 gigaparsecs in width. I know that this number sounds enormous, but did we understand its size? I don't think so. To understand the magnitude of this number, it is first essential to understand some basic astronomical units. How large is a parsec? Parsec is a form of the astronomical unit. 1 AU is the average distance between the Sun and the Earth, roughly 150 million kilometers. So a parsec is the longest side of a triangle, with 1 AU as its shortest side, subtending an angle of 1 arc second at the opposite vertex. On further calculations, 1 parsec will equal 3.26 light years. And here we are talking about 1 gigaparsec, which is around 93 billion light years, which is 879,780 times 10 kilometers to the 18th power. Magnificent, isn't it? Wait, there's some miscalculation in this, or not? The speed of light is the maximum speed. So if the universe is 13.7 billion years old, how is it possible for the width of the universe to be 93 billion light years? If after the collision of the Big Bang, any particle which has moved at the speed of light should have by now reached 13.7 billion light years, but it isn't that. So where did the matter come from beyond the limit of 13.7 billion light years? This is when Hubble's law comes into the picture. The law states that objects observed in deep space are redshifted, which means shifting rather than increasing the wavelength of light in the red end of the spectrum. The expansion of wavelength is due to the expansion of space. The fabric of space is expanding every day, assuming that dark matter and energy strongly influence this behavior. Thus, in estimating the width of the universe, it is essential to hold the expansion of space into account. 
Hene, the edge of the universe is undoubtedly much beyond 13 billion light years. But if the universe is humongous, what is the farthest object that humans could see by far? Before knowing what we can see, it is vital to know that some objects can never be seen. Why? 16 billion light years are the current cosmic event horizon, which is the upper limit of light ever reaching us. If it originated at this distance today, this means that the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, and hence the light can't reach us, since it will have to travel a relatively expanding space. But the JWST can enable us to see even further. The most distant galaxy ever observed is about 32 billion light years away which is calculated after taking expansion of space into account. Named GNZ11, which is farther than the upper limit, which we can never reach otherwise. About 46 billion light years away from the Earth, we will reach the surface of the last scattering. We observe in any direction we look in, in the sky this is. But what is the surface of the last scattering? The surface of the last scattering refers to a group of places in space that are at the correct distance from us and from which we are presently receiving photons that were initially emitted at the moment of photon decoupling. Contrary to its name, it originates from the first scattering of light, but the last of what we can see. Is this finally the edge of the universe? So this has to be the most awaited moment of this video. And the answer is both a yes and a no. This is because technically, this is the farthest in time or space that we can observe and becomes the edge of the observable universe. Anything that lies beyond this is the opaque universe. The observable universe embarks on the limit of what we can observe as of now, but not what we can imagine since there's a lot more to know about what lies beyond this. But what is it that exists in the opaque universe? What could exist at present? By far, we have been talking about what we can observe and what we know about from a point in space in the distant past, and everything we have seen so far was from the perspective of keeping the Earth at the center and scaling time to the past with distance. The edge of the observable universe also marks the particle horizon, which is the maximum distance one can see into the past. With this, a question arises. Is the universe infinite? According to Einstein's theory of relativity, it can be said that a flat universe must be infinite. If so, can we conclude that there is no edge or end to our ever-expanding universe? The answer is not straightforward, and is relative to time as we know more about the cosmos. With this, we come to the end of this fantastic video, which was filled with a lot of answers to some of the most intriguing questions, which hopefully would have helped you know better. And if it did, then follow the drill, hit the like button, comment down your views over the edge of the universe, and the JWST. Don't forget to subscribe for more such videos. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.